Hey friends! Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jenna. I love to crochet plushies. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. For today's video, we are going to be talking about how you can start a successful online small business. This will be your ultimate guide on where to start, how to start, and tips and tricks. I've done a few videos in the past that talk about business tips and kind of how I started, but I wanted to put together in one video everything that you guys would need to know if you want to start your own business. So before we jump into the guide, I just wanted to give some background on myself and my own small business journey. I have always wanted to be an entrepreneur and have my own small business. Like, I don't know where this dream came from, but I thought the idea of being my own boss seemed so cool. So I've actually had multiple different businesses in the past. I've done drop shipping, I've done polymer clay earrings, I started my own clothing boutique, the list goes on and on. Needless to say, none of those businesses really stuck and I ended up just abandoning them and moving on to the next thing. I'm happy to say, once I started crocheting, I completely fell in love with it and it really was the first hobby of mine where I felt passionate and hooked and just kept craving more. And I think ultimately this helped my small business really thrive, but we'll get into that later. So I started crocheting in January of 2022. My mother bought me a cat sweater crochet kit for Christmas that year and I never crocheted before. I did knit before though. I took some knitting lessons when I was a kid but I never really got into it. I kind of thought knitting was boring so I was really excited and like intrigued by crochet and that's when I found the world of amigurumi, of making your own stuffed animals and I just could not stop. Fast forward a few weeks and I decide hey you know what let me start selling my crochet plushies. I honestly just kept like accumulating so many of them. I'm like okay I need to sell them. So I opened up my store in late January of 2022 and from there like the rest is honestly history. I opened up my shop really with no game plan, no experience. I just went for it and thankfully everything you know worked out but that's not to say I didn't make mistakes and I definitely learned a lot along the way. Fast forward a few years to the present day, my Etsy store is still up and running. I have since branched out and made my own website. I also started a YouTube channel, a Patreon. I grew my Instagram to over 100,000 followers. A lot has happened over the years so I'm really excited to dive into it and share everything I know with you guys. All right, so the first section of this guide will go over research and pre-work. This is basically everything you need to think about before actually starting and launching your small business. So the two most important questions you need to ask yourself are one, what do you plan on selling? And two, where do you plan on selling it? As a small business owner, you're most likely to turn to the internet to sell your products. Selling online allows you to reach a large audience and really opens up the doors of opportunity that you wouldn't necessarily get if you sold in person. When selling online, your website and your domain name will be the two most important tools in your tool belt because this is how you will actually connect with your audience and sell your products to them. Your domain name is ultimately how your customers will find your store just because it's literally what they search to go to your store. Think of it as your online address. When it comes to picking the right domain name and getting it all set up, it can definitely be intimidating. I know I personally was very overwhelmed. It helps to look at what other successful businesses are using for their domain names and follow their lead. Music icon Bruce Springsteen is rocking Bruce Springsteen dot store. Same with Maroon 5 and even Rihanna is using a dot store domain. Clearly there's a pattern here. Dot store is the way to go. A dot store domain will set you apart from your competitors and help you stand out amongst all of the dot coms. Your customers will know immediately that your website is an online store when you use a dot store domain. It's like having one of those bright neon open signs right outside your store. But do you want to know the real tea? With a dot store domain, you actually sell more. A year long study shows that a website with a dot store domain attracts a whopping 87% more traffic. Like that's literally crazy. You also get double the visibility on Google with a dot store domain, which means more eyes on your products, which means more chances for a sale. You even save 12% on the cost of conversion with a dot store domain if you're running ads to your store. And aside from all of these dazzling facts, let's talk about all the potential savings that you can get. When you first launch your business, money is definitely tight and dot store understands that. They actually started a program called Elevate dot store to help all online sellers with crazy deals and discounts. So when you opt for a dot store domain, you're not only getting the snazziest new domain name, but you're also 
also unlocking access to exclusive discounts up to $2,500 on essential e-commerce tools, many of which I mentioned later in this video. Wix, Vistaprint, Mailchimp, the list goes on and on. It's almost like it pays to have a dot store domain. So here's the best part, friends. For a limited time, you can get your very own dot store domain for just 99 cents for the first year. For under $1, you can have the coolest domain name. Just use the code GENSTORE at checkout and you're all set. With a dot store domain, you can supercharge your success and set your small business on the path to greatness. So just to circle back, in terms of like the actual platform that you'll use to sell your products, I definitely recommend Etsy. I know Etsy's pretty controversial, mostly because of the high fees, but I think for absolute beginners, it is a great place to start and launch your business. I love the messaging platform that Etsy has built in. I love how you can buy shipping labels and have it sync all of your orders really seamlessly. You can run sales, you get great analytics, and honestly, it's very user-friendly. I do have a whole separate video dedicated to setting up an Etsy shop step-by-step, -step, so if that's something you're interested in I will make sure to link it down below alternatively if you don't want to sell on Etsy and you want to have your own selling platform Shopify Squarespace big cartel those are like the most popular options that I've heard there's a lot of pros to selling on your own and having your own website you can tailor your website to look exactly how you want it you have full control it seems more you know standalone like you have your own brand the fees aren't as high but then you also have some drawbacks when you're brand new you don't necessarily have like a loyal audience following so you have to pour a lot of time and energy and money into marketing whereas with Etsy you could get a lot of organic traffic and not necessarily have to spend marketing money on that if people are on Etsy looking up products that you sell there's a good chance that your listings could pop up on their feed and that could lead them going to your store and get you sales so there's definitely pros and cons but if you're an absolute beginner with no following no customer base I highly Highly recommend Etsy and then I didn't mention it earlier but when you are picking out the domain name try to have the name match whatever your small business is going to be called so for example it would be crochet by Jenna store I wouldn't want the actual web address to deviate from my store name just because it makes it harder for people to come and find you same thing with social media I've given out this tip before and I want to repeat it because I think it's really important if you're going to make an Instagram for your small business which I highly recommend definitely try to have your Instagram handle match your your business name so for me my Instagram handle is crochet by Jenna my Etsy store is crochet by Jenna my YouTube is crochet by Jenna it just helps to have everything aligned so when people do a quick search of your platforms come up whereas if your name is something different across platforms it will make it pretty tricky for people to find you okay the next thing you want to think about is how is your small business going to operate in terms of fulfillment are you going to be a made-to-order store or are you going to have a certain amount of inventory ahead of time and then sell what you have on hand. In the crochet world, these are often referred to as drops. So for example, if I were to do a sunflower turtle drop, I would go ahead and make a bunch of sunflower turtles ahead of time. And then I would go ahead and market this drop and say like, hey, on May 1st, I'm going to drop five sunflower turtles that are ready for adoption, first come, first serve. And this helps create urgency and get people excited about what you're selling. I've seen a lot of success with drops. And honestly, it's pretty nice because then you have full control over your inventory, how much you make, what you're selling, etc. Whereas on the made to order side, you will list a bunch of plushies that you could make for a customer, but they're not made already. You specifically will make them when someone places an order. This is honestly how I run my store I enjoy doing made to order just because I get to really tailor each plushie to my customers and sometimes my customers want something customized or personalized and I'm able to do that for them I will say made to order is a little bit more stressful and less like structured just because you never know when someone's gonna place an order and then if you get multiple orders at the same time you have a lot of orders that you need to sit down and crochet and ship out to people so it can definitely get backed up and a little overwhelming especially like during the holidays or something when people People are all ordering at the same time so if you're in school or you're working or you don't have as much time on your hand to dedicate to sit down and crochet I kind of recommend doing drops that way you can control when you're getting orders what you're making your inventory etc okay the next thing you want to think about is pricing 
I get so many questions on pricing and it's still something that I struggle with to this day with my own business. My number one tip for pricing is to do some market research. So for example, if I'm wondering how much should I sell my turtles for, I will go on to Etsy and I will search crochet turtles and then I'll kind of scroll through all of the listings and see what like the general price range is maybe I'll see turtles being sold anywhere from like $25 to $50 so once I have that price range in mind I'll then go back and think about everything that I put into making this turtle most importantly my time so how long did it take me to make this turtle and then the supply costs because overall you're running a small business to profit like you want to make money off of what you sell so if you don't take into account the supply costs you might end up like undercutting yourself and not profiting at all. And then when it comes to how much time you put into making that turtle, you kind of want to think through what hourly rate would you want to pay yourself? $8 an hour, $9 an hour. Of course, when you're first starting out, you might not want to be charging like the maximum amount just because you're brand new. People aren't too familiar with like your reputation, your brand. But as you grow a following and customer loyalty, you can definitely charge more because people will be coming to your store specifically to to buy your products. They're willing to spend five more dollars to get a plushie made by Shay versus made by Cali. So that's definitely important to keep in mind. Personally, when I first started selling plushies, when I would go on Etsy and do my market research, if I noticed that turtles were selling anywhere between like $25 and $50, I would price myself on the lower end just so I could attract customers and really start building up my reputation, getting those five-star reviews, getting orders in general. I feel like the first few months of having an Etsy store, you should really be focused on getting as many orders as possible. Just so when people come across your store, they'll see like oh crochet by jenna has like 10 orders versus seeing like oh crochet by jenna hasn't made any sales you know one sale is better than no sales so you can prioritize getting orders by setting your prices a little bit lower in the beginning and that will ultimately pay off in the long run i'll also include a link down below to a specific pricing tool i know some people are more quantitative and they want an actual formula to help them with pricing so i have used this pricing tool before and i've talked about it briefly in like some other videos especially with market prepping so I'll link that down below for you guys in case you want an actual pricing Excel sheet okay and then lastly you want to think about shipping how are you going to ship out your products to your customers in the crochet world, I feel like a lot of people use either poly mailers or boxes. In the beginning, I definitely used poly mailers because they were cheaper, I could get them in bulk, but since then I've switched to using cardboard boxes only when shipping out plushies just because it makes them more secure during shipment. In the beginning, some of my customers would show me their plushie once they got it, and not gonna lie, it looked a little beat up, and I was like, oh no, like it did not look like that when I sent it off to you. Luckily, nobody complained, but internally, I I was like, oh, I don't want my plushie to be smushed in transit and have my customer open it up and have it smushed. So that's why I ultimately switched to boxes. Also, in the beginning, I offered free shipping. This is another tactic I used to entice customers to come buy from my shop versus another shop that was charging for shipping. I think offering free shipping is great in the beginning, but definitely try to stay away from it as your shop progresses, just because that ultimately takes away from your profits, you know? You'll have to pay for shipping, and I'm not gonna lie, when my shop was like finally growing and getting orders consistently, I was really scared to take away free shipping because I'm like, no one's gonna order from me. But they actually did keep ordering. So again, don't be scared to take away free shipping once you establish yourself and don't be scared to offer it in the beginning either I will say to make up for what you're losing out on in shipping costs You can up your prices a little just to make sure you're not losing too much money when it comes to shipping Okay, now let's talk about actually launching your business and starting it up all of the small business videos that I've watched Everyone talks about how important it is to have like a successful launch to really market your store before it even opens to really like get your name out to really market it and honestly like I don't know this is just me and my experience but don't feel too much pressure to have this like crazy intense launch day like you can have a successful small business that didn't have a crazy big launch day in general it's super scary to start a small business so don't put too much pressure on yourself when it comes to actually like pressing the open button. A lot of questions that I usually get relate to how did I know when to actually start and open an Etsy? For me, I ultimately started selling my plushies just because I had too many of them. I was crocheting way too much and they were like taking over my house. So I was like, okay, I need to start selling. But for others, I would say like, don't be too hard on yourself. I feel like a lot of comments that I read say like, 
oh like my plushies would never sell because I don't think they're good enough and like stuff along that lines like no do not put yourself down like that you'll never know if your plushies will sell if you don't list them having a small business is definitely all about trial and error you got to put yourself out there you got to test the water see how your customers react and then go from there but completely holding back and not selling anything at all that will ultimately get you nowhere because you won't get to see how people react to your products and you won't get that feedback so I think the most important thing is just do it open the store and then go from there what's really helpful when launching your store you should offer a few different products to see which one will do best which one will do the worst and from there you can keep tailoring what you offer to really target your specific customer base so when I launched my Etsy I think I had like five different plushies that I offered I had like an axolotl a turtle a cow and by offering those different plushies I was able to see what my customers were really interested in my axolotls and turtles got like the highest number of sales whereas the cow and my other plushies didn't so that was kind of a clear indication to me like oh my customers seem to really be liking axolotls let me offer them in more colors let me offer them in different sizes and then from there I kept refining my products I kept improving on my axolotls my turtles and then I was able to see more consistent growth more orders come in more positive reviews so it's really really important to kind of test the waters don't be scared to list a few different different things to see how they do and I wouldn't even consider like your worst selling product a failure that just means your audience isn't as interested in that product so then that kind of signals to you like hey what can I change about this product that could potentially get more attention from my customers so for the cow for example I was offering it in like the typical black and white color scheme but then I decided like hey what if I do a strawberry themed cow and then bang the order started coming in so it's just small tweaks like that that can help improve your business over Overall. And then this ties into the next section, which is all about marketing and social media. I definitely will say that you don't need a big social media presence to have a successful online store. When I first launched my Etsy, I think I had like under a thousand followers and I still was able to get orders. And I want to say this is because of the organic traffic that I got through Etsy. Had I not been on Etsy and I had my own standalone website with less than a thousand followers and like no money spent on marketing, I don't think I would have gotten any sales in the beginning. So this is another reason why. I recommend Etsy especially if you don't have a large social media presence but once you start your website I would definitely try to post consistently across social media whether that be on Instagram on TikTok YouTube just choose a platform that you want to stick to and really try to post consistently on that platform and for crocheters specifically whenever I make a new plushie I will take so many pictures and so many videos of this plushie like inside outside different scenery in the background create a few different reels like I will create so much content off of one plushie that way I don't have to constantly be crocheting something new to be able to post just really capitalize on what you have and don't be scared to take multiple different pictures and videos of the same thing and on that note I definitely recommend taking photos with natural lighting for me I feel like my best photos are taken like 2 p.m. kind of like when the Sun isn't at its peak but you have that nice bright natural lighting outside also, I feel like I take really good photos on cloudy days where you don't have like that direct sunlight and light But it still gives like off a nice glow. My camera's dying. Okay, I'm back I also had to put my hair up because it is very hot here getting a little worked up talking But okay back to what I was saying a few of you guys have requested that I come out with like a tutorial on how to Take photos and what's the best way to create content So I definitely can do that in the future for you guys But I definitely try to capitalize on the Sun and all of that good natural lighting I also take all of my photos on my iPhone I don't really use like a fancy camera or anything and I usually don't do any like editing to the photos either Like honestly the Sun is good enough and this reminds me of another tip actually Sorry, I feel like this is so scattered But when it comes to listing your products having really good listing photos is key because that's ultimately what will entice your customers to like click on your listing Check out what you're selling ultimately buy it So if you notice that one of your listings isn't doing so hot you can also try to switch up the listing Listing photos. I actually did this for my no-so octopus pattern. Originally the listing photo was pretty bad you 
guys. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I guess, you know, I was just starting out. But basically, I had like some crazy font on it. It was super hard to read. It was not a good picture of the octopus. Like, yeah, I don't blame people for not wanting to buy it. So a year later, I made a bunch of octopi in rainbow colors. So I lined them all up and I took a picture. And I was like, wow, this is like a really cute aesthetic photo. Maybe I should update the octopus pattern listing photo to this photo. So I did that and immediately I saw a difference. Like all of a sudden I was getting sales on the pattern. I was like, the only thing that I changed was the listing photo. So now I definitely have a habit of going back to old listing photos or listings that aren't doing too well and I will like refresh the photos, make sure they're like the best possible pictures. And most of the time this leads to them performing better. So in terms of actually growing your social media accounts, I feel like the biggest thing that changed the game for me and my Instagram was posting reels. Stagnant photo posts just aren't doing as well nowadays. Like you don't reach as many people, specifically people who don't follow you and that's key. With reels and shorts and even like TikToks honestly, your content gets blasted out to people that don't follow your account and it's really important that people who don't follow you see your content because you want to get their attention so they can eventually follow you and support you so I started taking videos and making reels and I saw a huge difference in my follower count like it went up exponentially and I know making reels is intimidating I to this day still don't really know the best way to go about it whenever I finish a plushie I go outside I take a video of the finished plushie and then I'll go grab the yarn that I use to make the plushie and film that and that's basically what the majority of my reels are so definitely don't be too intimidated and be like oh I need it to be perfect or I need it to be super intricate definitely not the case as long as you're pushing some type of short form content out there you're most likely to get some non followers eyes on it but, all right this kind of segues into the last part of this guide which talks about growth and motivation definitely try not to get discouraged if you see slow growth in the beginning this is something my small business struggled with too in the few months that my Etsy shop was up and running I did not have a lot of orders but don't let that get you down use analytics to your advantage keep doing trial and error pushing different products out there see how your audience reacts and just keep giving it your best shot I know in this day and age it's so easy to compare ourselves to others but you absolutely can't do that because you're on your own journey this is your small business and it doesn't matter how successful or unsuccessful other people around you are all that matters is what you're doing I mentioned this in the beginning of the video but I think the main reason why my crochet business has blossomed versus my other businesses that failed was because I genuinely really love what I'm doing. I don't view it as work. I have an absolute passion for crochet. It's a part of me and I think it's so important to have that kind of like love and passion towards what you're doing because if not, chances are you won't want to invest the time and energy into building your small business and staying at it. And honestly, that's okay. It's okay to pivot and to stop if it's not working for you. When I launched my clothing business, a few months into it, I was like, what am I doing? Doing. like I'm not even passionate about fashion and that's okay because it ultimately allowed me to pivot to something that I love doing so try not to be too hard on yourself try not to be scared of failure because failure is not a bad thing it could open up so many different doors of opportunity for you and what's to say you won't actually succeed my favorite quote from the office is when Michael Scott is quoting another famous quote that I don't know off the top of my head who said it but the quote is you miss hundred percent of the shots that you don't take you never know what will happen with your small business if you don't open it if you don't take that leap, if you don't list that product, if you don't put yourself out there. It can definitely be scary, but I just want to say you got this. It's worth it and have fun. But okay, that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I hope everything that I mentioned in this video was helpful. And if you guys still have questions, feel free to comment them down below. I'll be more than happy to help answer them. But all right, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Good luck if you're launching your business. You got this. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.